Stacy on behalf of Becca, and I'm going to be walking you through how to create this We Are Grateful Otsaliga tree that you can see at home. This craft was inspired by a book of the same name by a woman named Tracy Sorrell. Today I'm going to do a demo to show you how to make this beautiful fall stamped tree. There's going to be three main sections. One, I'll walk you through which materials you need. Two, how to prepare the rind fork stamps and also the stamp pads made with kitchen sponges. And three, we'll walk through the project to see how it's made. To get started with your materials, you should gather the following. First, you'll need about three to four recycled corks that you can find at Mecca in the teacher warehouse. You can also find a couple other materials at Mecca, including a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Mine is in this nice brown craft paper color. And you can also find, you'll need two trays because we're going to make our own stamp pads. And you can use really anything for the trays. I'm going to be using these little Petri dishes that you could also use a piece of foam or a plastic container lid. You will also need to gather some paints. I prefer for this craft to use tempera washable paints. So grab three different colors. You'll need brown, red, and yellow. And we're going to um, mix these together to also add orange to our color palette. You will also need a kitchen sponge, which I have an example of right here. We'll actually need some scissors as well because you don't want to cut it in half cutting board and knife. I just chose a really simple um, steak knife from home. It's not serrated, but it'll be enough to make the small cuts in the fork that we'll need. And finally, a small bowl of water to help wet the sponge and a black marker. All right, let's get started making our stamps from cork. So we're going to make several different shapes. The first that I'd like you to make is going to be the stamp that we'll use for the tree trunk. So um, this is a job for the adult. You'll take your uh, cutting knife, your cutting board, your stamp, um, and just kind of gently rock back and forth right down the center of the cork. And we're trying to cut it lengthwise so that we have a stamp that looks like a rectangle. Okay, you can set those aside. We're gonna make a, several other stamps that are going to become the leaves to make um, all around the branches. Okay, next we'll make the stamps that are going to become the leaves around the branches. So these stamps we're going to make out of the short end of the fork and to get started, you will find the end of a cork that you like that is nice and smooth, um, preferably one side that hasn't been used with the wine corker. And take your black marker and just <clears throat> make like an almond shape on the end of your cork. And this is going to be your traditional leaf shape. Next thing you're going to do is taking your steak knife, just start to gently cut down about an eighth of an inch around that leaf shape. Notice I'm making several cuts to kind of trace the outside of the leaf. And I'm gonna do that all the way around that leafy almond shape. So it might take you like three to four slices on each side. So now I have a bunch of slices into the top of my cork. I want to get rid of the pieces around the leaf so that what's left will be my stamp. And so what, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold the cork plain flat I'm going to put my knife in about one eighth of an inch from the edge and I'm going to gently cut all the way around the fork. And 
you can help pull away some of the excess. And what you have left is a beautiful leaf cut into the edge of your fork. Okay, you can set that one aside. Trees don't always have the same shape leaf and we want to layer several different colors into our tree. So let's make one that is um, the shape of a fan. Okay, so for the next cork stamp that we're going to make, we want to first draw the shape of a fan on the short end of the cork. I'm gonna use my black marker and draw a fan shape. So just making it a little B, kind of like that. Next, use the same method of cutting about one, quart, one eighth of an inch down into the cork on the top of the cork there. I'm going to trace in the shape with your knife. So for this one, we want this edge to stay for our stamp. And so we're only going to cut around the edges of the part that we want to cut away. And again, about one eighth of an inch from the edge. So the last wine cork shape we're going to make is a half moon or a half circle. So I've drawn a line right down the end of the short side of my cork and I'm finding my knife. Again, just going to make one cut about one eighth of an inch down the cork. And because I want to keep one side of the edge of the cork, I'm only going to cut um, from the edge around one side. And this one can be a little tricky. Should look like this when it's done. All right, now that we have our stamps all cut out, next thing we're gonna do is work on the stamp pad. So start with your kitchen sponge and you're gonna to wanna to cut it in half because we want two different colors of stamps. Next thing you're going to do is dip your kitchen sponge in your bowl of water. You want it wet but not sopping, so give it a little ring out and then place it on your tray. I'll do that for both sponges. All right, next we're going to put the paint on top of the sponge. So we want two, three main colors actually. The first stamp is going to have brown. So just put a big glob of paint on the top there and let's move that out of the way so you can see. The next one's going to have a mix of red and yellow. Okay. Next, you're gonna to wanna to use the straight edge of your knife to just scrape over the top of the paint and, and kind of press it into the sponge. Try not to let it fall off the sides too much. But press it in there so that the sponge soaks up the paint and you end up with a nice stamp pad. For the red and the yellow, I'm not going to spread it across. I'm just going to, I'm going to wipe off my knife so I don't um, mess it up with the brown. Um, I'm going to spread it up and down so that they don't spread, um, they don't mix together too much. I want there to be definitely a spot with yellow, definitely a spot with red, and then somewhere in the middle we can find some orange color as well. Okay, so I think we have everything we need now to get stampin'. All right, let's get started making our Otsali Heliga grateful, we are grateful tree. So the first thing we'll want to do, just for a reminder of what it looks like, this is where we're going. The first thing we're going to make do is make this wide trunk at the bottom, a trunk toward the top, and then we're gonna make about five different main branches coming off that will then create more branches onto later. Okay. So, to make the big trunk, I'm gonna start with the rough side of my long rectangle stamp, 
and I'm going to use the brown. A little bit closer. And I'm just going to start. You have to go back for more paint quite often because the cork doesn't really soak up much of the paint. But with enough stamps, you can start to fill in a shape. And sometimes if one side of the stamp isn't working well, you can try the other to see if you can get farther with that. So you can do your best not to smear with the brown paint, but it's okay if you do because we're going to have lots of falling leaves over this tree and it'll be really easy to cover up those little mistakes. So here's one main branch. I'm gonna do another one. And sometimes if you really wanna fill in the tree, you can actually use the other side of the stamp here. So now I'm putting the rounded side down on my paint and you can kind of See how it fills it in with more color? Just rock it back and forth with the edge of that paint. And it actually makes it look kind of like real wood or real bark. Okay, now that we have the five main branches done, you're going to use, again, the rounded side of your long stamp and make some smaller branches that come off the big branches like trees do. So I'm going to add some more paint to my sponge and I'm actually going to use my finger to kind of help the sponge soak it up there. I've got it tall here. So use the edge and just start making smaller branches come off the bigger ones. And again, we're not looking for perfection here. We're just building our tree. Most of the leaves are gonna cover these branches, so we just wanna give the illusion that they're back there. All right, so I think we're ready to start putting leaves on. So put this aside, let it dry, and then come back and we'll start with our yellow color. The next step is to use your half moon stamp to fill, start filling in the tree leaves with yellow. So I'm gonna load up some yellow onto my half moon stamp and start stamping yellow all over the background of this tree. And you want to continue until you've got most of the tree area, some yellow leaves falling down, and then some yellow leaves along the ground before we move over to our red color. Next, we're going to use this fan shape stamp to add red to our tree. Next, we're going to use this fan shape stamp to add some red leaves all around our tree. And so on until it gets all the way filled in. Don't forget to add some red leaves also falling from the tree. All right, now that all the red leaves are filled in, we're going to add some both red and yellow to the sponge again. And this time, we're going to scrape them together to make orange. I use quite a bit of red, so I'm gonna use more yellow so that it's a nice, bright orange. I'm gonna take my knife, kind of mix them together, and pat them into the sponge. Now we're going to use our almond shape leaf stamp to fill in everywhere 
with this beautiful, bright orange leaf. And notice I'm going pretty fast, like you don't have to be super picky about where you put the leaves. Just imagine how you see them outside, just all piled up together. Keep doing that until the tree is full of orange leaves. All right, the leaves on the tree are filled in and now it's time to go in with a block marker and outline some of the tree's branches so that they pop. So what I would do is I would maybe start here on the trunk. I'm not gonna go all the way down because I'm not outlining all of it, just some of it. Whenever I see a br main branch, I'm gonna kind of highlight some V's between there. Just so that you get the impression that these are indeed nice big branches under there. You can choose wherever you want to put them. Okay, that's a good start. The very last step would be to add the we are grateful saying um, opposite of Otsali Haliga. And if you need help with that spelling, you can go to the instructions. Here we'll look at my prior demo. So Otsali Haliga is Cherokee for we are grateful. So I'm gonna add that on this side and I'm going to kind of draw it in kind of a round shape. cover some of the letters to make them nice and bold. And you have now completed your Otsali Haliga We Are Grateful fall tree.